There's so many life lessons here. Hey y'all, gravity, any day above ground, live it. So you already know what to do. Share, like, and subscribe. That's right, share, like, and subscribe because I'm not like other YouTubers. I'm different. I don't know when my people are going to figure things out in life and realize that you're an adult. And as an adult, you have to move as such. You can't play like kids anymore. And trust me, you're hearing this from someone who still has somewhat of an immature mind, but when life hits you, it hits you. All right, folks, let's just get into it. Now, I saw this video on Twitter a couple days ago, and I had to watch it at least three times before I did this commentary because I don't think this young lady realized what she did or the life lessons that were being taught here. Now, her name is Ebony Davis. She's one of these blue checks, so she must be someone important. I've never heard of her. Apparently, she's a, what they call, I guess, a social media influencer, model, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the terminology for people like this. But anyway, she put up a video because I guess whatever company she was working with as an ambassador dropped her because she put up something on her personal Instagram, which I'm going to show right here. All right. So you saw that caption, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm pretty sure my crowd and those who happen to find this video will agree that that's probably not the best conveyor or message you could send to that picture. You probably would have been better off saying nothing. But I kind of want to play the video of what she said. So the commentary that will follow will actually make sense. So let me do that right here. Nowhere in the contract were there any stipulations given around what kind of content I could post, except for the branded content, which would be approved by the company. As for my personal content, nothing was said. After posting that picture and posting that caption, I received a phone call from my agent saying that the company thought it was inappropriate. And I just want to take a second to unpack that. When I read that caption, I read a playful articulation of the love I have for my man. It's been generally agreed upon by the black community for decades that the N-word isn't derogatory, it's a term of endearment. And that brings us to the photo. Yet again, when I look at this picture, I see playfulness. I see a black girl living her best life, having fun. There's nothing inappropriate about it to me, especially not in the world we live in today. For centuries, black women's bodies have been scrutinized. They've been picked apart. They've been deemed unworthy. They've been deemed inappropriate. And this is yet again an extension of that rhetoric. It's the hypersexualization of the black female body which has led to this very conversation. The only way someone else could deem this as inappropriate is if they projected their sexual desires onto me, or if they projected their underlying judgments onto me, which is what we call prejudice. Now, typically I would brush that off and say, that's a you problem, but it- Whoa, 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 whoa. I had to start the beat over again. I had to start the beat over again. I can't believe what I just heard. Now, again, remember, I said I listened to his three times. But doing commentary, because I, I had a opinion formulated in my mind. I was going to educate. I was going to educate. I'm still going to educate. But, ma'am, we got to talk. Because I didn't pick up on this before. And doing some quick research while that video was playing, I can't. People were saying that you're Jamaican and your man is Jamaican and I brushed that off because like maybe not. But some of these terms you're using in here, like the black community and what was the other one? Just, um, OK, you're young, you're young and, and not well informed. OK, I'm going to be if you are Jamaican, um, I'm going to be big brother. I'm going to be big brother to you here. I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm not even going to use the accent for this, ma'am. Um, I, I, whatever. 
ma'am, you I, I guess you don't realize why you lost your five fi- your five figure deal. I, I I see why now you lost it. You, you lost it based on sheer ignorance okay you may be a businesswoman man but I, I guess you're a novice at this so i'm going to educate you as a person who's dealt with business and contracts i'm going to educate you on things ma'am number one when you sign up to be a brand ambassador or you go to work for companies or anything attached to somebody else giving you money you're under an unwritten rule that says that you're representing this company whether you're on the clock or off the clock i know a lot of people don't like to say that because people might feel a way about it because they're saying you know what my personal life isn't tied to what i do for a nine to five to make money i get that but this is not the age we live in man if someone's willing to put money in your pocket you're under an obligation to make sure you represent that company well. Now, if you don't believe what I'm saying, you can go look up the old story of Amy Cooper up in New York where she lost her job and damn near lost her livelihood because she decided to let her dog off her leash and got into it with a black man in Central Park. Again, she wasn't on the clock with her company, but her actions calling the cops on that man, almost getting that man in a situation that he didn't need to be into because it was two New Yorkers having a disagreement. That should serve as a perfect example of what you're trying to do in this video. You're trying to tell your audience and those who watch it, this is not your fault. What you did was how you said it playful. And this is what the black community it's, it's established that that the n-word is is okay to be used for black men news flash ma'am i don't know where you've been for the past we'll even say six years we don't play them games up here see the hood gets to play you could call a black man my nigga you could call a black woman could call a black man bruh we don't most of us don't play like that that's not us that's a stereotype you basically relegated your man this this dude you love this dude who you're working with to try to build some sort of a legacy he's considered by you to be the n-word so when he goes out in public now if they recognize him they'll know he's your n-word that's all he is not your boyfriend not your lover not your man he's your n-word so he's a couple steps up from being a dog and then you're running on film talking about oh it was playful it was playful no there's nothing to play with that let's play the game man if since you say it's playful imagine if your man took that same picture put it up on his instagram and said hey this is my b I don't think you would take too kindly to it. Most of the women who found that won't take kindly to it. And a lot of men would not take kindly to it. And probably whoever you were doing business with would have saw it and would have seen it and then said, hey, call your agent up and say, hey, we can't work with her because her man is being disrespectful to women. See how that works? So they just did what they're supposed to do, not associate themselves with that word. I think you don't understand that we live in a society right now where any derogatory term is going to come with backlash, no matter how playful it is. But again, this is people not understanding what's going on in the world, people not reading the room. Now, the other part I wanna get to, and this is the part that really, really ticked me off. You're bringing up people being disrespectful to black women. Ma'am, this has nothing to do with your body. You're a beautiful young woman, we, we won't take that away from you. This has nothing to do with your body. There's nothing that has to do with your hypersexualization of black women 
for you to make that leap, you would have had to show in that video, not just the caption, but you would have had to show comments of people coming in at you. You didn't do that. You made it about your caption, the picture, and the fact that your agent said that company did not want to work with you. How is that hypersexualizing black women? How is that making black women, black women's bodies an issue in a post that is not conducive to building a relationship with a company? I need this explained to me. You can't bring a wrong in to a situation to make yourself right. You messed up. But I hear the arrogance in your voice. You're not going to understand the lesson here. You're going to continue to do this and you're going to continue to alienate people from wanting to work with you. It's like I said, it's bad enough that you called your man the N word on a post but now you went on a three minute rant trying to explain why they are the bad guys not even realizing that you made yourself almost unworkable you've made yourself almost not being worth the hassle If your personal page is something that you seriously want to keep away from your branded content, you need to make sure you and your agent go into these negotiations with that as a firm rule. What I post on my personal page has nothing to do with what I'm doing for you. And I'm sorry, man, but in this day and age, I don't know no company that's going to go for that. Because a company can't afford for you to be a renegade somewhere and then the backlash comes back on them so let's let's just wrap this all up in a nice little bowl ma'am this video was highly unnecessary i get that you wanted to bring awareness to what to a situation that cost you money but you came off looking bad this was not it you have to understand in business, especially with contracts, they should not have to tell you that what you do when you're not working for them is still a reflection of them. Once you sign your, not, your name on that dotted line, they become part of your life. We can bring up, I'll bring up an easy example just to quickly illustrate this. Will Smith, we all know what happened with him and Chris Rock. It's easy to look on from the outside and see, okay, he did what he did. Everybody's distancing, distancing themselves from him. Everybody's making their comments, but a lot of people don't want to talk about the fact that he's lost out on projects because of what he did yes he has his 10 year academy ban but he had that movie on Netflix Bright that did very well and he they were poised to make a sec, uh, sequel they're not doing it anymore Bad Boys 4 on hold yes he just signed on to do a slave movie but nobody wants to see Will Smith in a slave movie come on let's be honest this is kind of like what Mel Gibson did years ago when he went on his rant about his ex-wife and 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 the, and the Jews. He had to sit down for a few years. I'm going to need us as adults and younger adults to realize that this world is very cruel and people can take away an opportunity from you like that. So please take this as a lesson that from now on, you got to be very careful what you post online. Very careful. 
because you don't know who's going to see it and you don't know what the effect is going to have. But anyway, that's all I got to say on this. Let me get up out of here. You already know what to do. Share, like, and subscribe. That's right. Share, like, and subscribe because I'm not like other YouTubers. I'm different. Take care. Stay safe. I'm out.